it's a long, tedious process, so I try to just, you know, stay in that one-day mindset. I'm just trying to have as much fun and do as much work as I can in that one day and not really look at the what my next week is going to look like because there's a lot of weeks to come before I can really do anything. Being out there, you know, you look like you're in good spirits. You've been around all the pitchers, around all the guys. Jace Tingler said that you've been really engaged in the meetings and, and with the other guys. How important is that to you in this process, and why is it important? Well, I mean, I still feel like I got to hold, you know, my end of the bargain, and I can't really do that on the field. So I feel like, uh, I mean, I have a lot of expertise. I got some time, and I got some time in some, you know, crucial moments, some playoff games, and I think I can share some of that, especially with, uh, you know, we got some new guys coming in, and it's just fun to hear, like, even learn from them, watch what they're doing, watch what how Darvish goes about his stuff and hearing how he, you know, makes his pitches spin and all these little things I can start piecing together with my game and try to help their game as well. Is there anything this time around that you're going to do differently from, from the last time you had this surgery? Well, the last one uh, went pretty well. The last one lasted me about nine years. So I think I'm going to try to follow that protocol. I mean, it was pretty, uh, it, they say the new ligament should last anywhere from seven to 10 years. And I was at the wits end of that one. So I'm going to try to do the same with this one. Perfect. Thank you. We'll go to Bryce. Hey, Mike, welcome back. Um, in some ways, these are both disappointments, but I wonder how they felt different. The moment when you realized you weren't, your playoff run was over. And then this season, knowing that with all the offseason moves and how loaded this lineup is, that you can't be a part of it. Yeah, what was the, what was the question? The, the first, basically, <laughs> how did those feel? Yeah, that's really disappointing. Little... Both those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just wonder if they felt different, whether no. it was, you know, I mean, actually, I mean, I, I don't look at, I don't like looking at the glass half empty. I'm not that kind of guy. So, I mean, the more I'm just looking at what kind of beast we're going to be when I get back and me getting a year under my belt of mastering my craft even more. And I felt like I was just on the cusp of really, you know, reaching my potential and, you know, uh, you know, getting that extra gear to even separate myself even more. So now I just have a year to kind of hone in on that, learn from these other guys. And then I think what everybody in this room, without even being told, the team we're a part of right now is a one, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime chance you can get in your career. You're not going to have this much talent in one room for a set amount of years. I don't think anywhere across the league. And I mean, it's going to be, I think it's just like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I'm just looking forward to getting back and getting back with these guys. And just for fun, if you put on a manager's hat, where would you slot yourself if you were healthy in this rotation? <laughs> Oh man, uh, I, do we, we got number ones? We got num we got seven number ones over here. At least in the a couple <laughs> in the make number ones in the making. So uh, I, I'd say we're all number ones, man. That's a that's a tough one. It's just uh, I just want the ball every day. I'm, I think these guys are the same way. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. We'll go to AJ. Mike, is AJ is piecing together this roster? I mean, how how much? excitement did you get out of the fact that pretty much all of these moves were for two or three seasons that this group is in place for a long period of time, especially because you're missing this year? Yeah, no, no I mean, I've, I, that's what I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to, like, once I saw that everyone was going to be here for a while, and uh, then we even locked up uh, Toddy for, you know, 14 years, and you, you just see they're really trying to build a winning culture here, and it's something that I think not just I want to be a part of, but you get a sense. I'm sure there's guys all around the league that want to be a part of the Padres right now. We're doing something special. What can so many different pitchers and different styles, different philosophies, how, how, how specifically does that make the collective better? Because, I mean, it's, it, it's the same way that uh, I think a lot of guys will get hurt in their career and they get put in this cookie-cutter kind of – you know, mold where you got to be like this or do this. And you got a bunch of guys that do things way differently that have been successful at the top of our games. And now you bring that all together and there's just more pieces where it's like, hey, I'm nothing like this guy, but I'm a lot like this guy. They're two totally different guys, but they're both aces. And now you can learn from, you know, you can pick and choose. So I think that that mold, and that mesh is what's going to create, you know, even better guys coming behind us and just create that culture of winning, that same culture that I felt like, like how we in Cleveland when I came up and it was like these starting pitchers, set the bar you know it was already like the 10 innings 5ks was nothing to them or five innings 10ks was nothing to them so it wasn't gonna be a big deal if you came up and did it once you start setting that bar higher and higher you just start changing the culture and the other guys are going to just reach for that little extra gear and reach for more we'll go to alden 
Hey, Mike. Um, without you in the mix at the moment, how do you think this group stacks up to the Dodgers right now? I mean, I thought I thought we matched up with them just fine last year, and I think this year uh, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind when they go in that field that we have every bit of personnel on this side of the this side of the field to to beat them. And I just I think everybody has that mindset, and I think this is, everyone's a little more comfortable with that mindset now too. And now that you've had some time around the team, I'm, I'm wondering just what what has struck you about uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, aside from just sort of the obvious talent. Oh, I mean, he's just he's a ball player, man. It's not like it's not about the how many pictures he can get taken. It's not about how, I don't know how much retweets or the, it's it's about winning baseball games and having fun doing it. And that's everybody in this clubhouse. It's just cool to see everyone on that same collective page where it's yeah, personal accolades are cool, and you you know you have to you know do certain things to you know feed your family. Everyone understands that, but it's just way different here, man. It's like a way different vibe in a, for a big league clubhouse. It's everyone's here. Feels like a good travel baseball team. We're all just trying to win ball games at any cost. No matter if someone's 0 for 4 and someone's 5 for 5, it doesn't matter who that is. Just someone pick up the torch and pass it to the next guy. Thanks, man. Back to Andy. Hey, I, I have a, a different question, but just off of what you were just talking with with Alden, I, why is that? I mean, you've been part of different clubhouses. Mm -hmm. Why does it feel different? I, I just let's, just to go back to what I said in the beginning, I really think it's without guys being told. You look around, you look at some of the names in these lockers, and you're like, "This is a once in a career opportunity," and this is this is more than it, it. It should always be more than yourself, and I just think now it's really putting it in your face that this has to be more than you. This is a lot bigger than you, and what we have going here is some some really winning recipe, like really winning recipe, and you play your role, do your part, and you know hold your end of the keep, and we're gonna be a good spot. Do you feel like is there is it is there not a lot of ego in that in a sense like a lot of guys that that could be big name or are big name guys um, like you said are just putting putting the greater good above them sort of thing? Yeah, a hundred percent. That's I think exactly what it is, and I think it's just meshing up with there's an, just enough good guys, enough good talent in the room that there's no there's not room for ego. <laughs> we wouldn't not in this clubhouse, not with these last names in these lockers. One more question about you. You alluded to it in the beginning, but I just wanted to expand on it. Not only are you imparting uh, your wisdom to the other pitchers, but is there some kind of silver lining in this where, you know, you, you, when you're slowed down like this, you, you can impart other things that maybe you wouldn't have time for during, during a normal season as far as learning from other guys as well? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm already finding that now. I mean, it's I, I watch enough video and my own video all the time and video of other guys before it starts and stuff that you get to the point where you kind of like, don't you really want to watch baseball when you're away from the field? You're doing it so much. And now it's like, dude, I, I catch, I'm watching D2 college baseball games on my phone now and just watching how they're setting up guys, watching how they're getting their signs picked or whatever. And then I'm just, now I can really see, like I'm a student of the game by nature now. And I really like that. Cool. Thank you so much. We'll go to Adam. Hey, Mike, I hope you're doing well. Um, I've seen you spending a little bit of time around the other players and spend some time in the bullpen. And I'm wondering if you've had an opportunity to see Mackenzie Gore, and if so, what your impressions are of him. Yeah, no, I actually had the, the privilege of like kind of like going out there and watching him and working with him uh, last year before the playoffs in, uh, uh, on the field in San Diego. And he's – I mean, he's got every bit of talent to be one of those guys that's a household name, one of those guys that's front of rotation guys. And uh, I, this this spring training, I really you really started to see with his fastball. I mean, his fastball is just jumping out of his hand, and just see he, his body's moving a lot more free. I think that's what he's getting back to. Is I think he got into a little mold where he's getting kind of mechanical and getting in his head a little bit, and now you can kind of see him start to flourish and start to really like understand like, yo, I got I got the stuff to be here. I got the stuff to win at this level, and you're starting to see that kind of come into play now. How beneficial do you think it can be for him that the fact that the team brought in all these veteran uh, pitchers who are, have, are so accomplished and so successful for him to be around them during spring training and be able to learn and soak up from them? Um, I mean, if, if, if he uses it wisely, which I, I already see he is, uh, I mean, he's going to get to skip that you know sophomore slump. He's going to get to skip a lot of those stages that a lot of us had to endure because just the little things. I mean, little things just as far as – a guy being able to pick your signs at second base, you'd be surprised how many guys go through a season where there's five teams that know what they're throwing every time just because they're glove positioning. And just little things that you can kind of fast forward and just get better and just knowing how you're setting up hitters. Like I remember when I came up, like 
but it's a way different ball game from AAA to here, just setting up guys and going through a lineup three times. And so now he's going to get around, a, like, you know, a bunch of us guys who've done it and know how to do it, know how to navigate lineups. And I just think it's going to bolster him to get even better. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Go back to AJ. Mike, you were obviously dealing with some some stuff late last season. You try to pitch through it, and obviously the goal is to win in the postseason, and you, you want that chance. But looking back now, how, how do you reflect on that decision to kind of try and push through it, given where you en ended up with it? Uh, I mean, I 100% would have done it again. I mean, that's uh, there's a bunch of cool things that come along with playing in the big leagues, but like, there's nothing that's more fun than that postseason where every single person's out there you know, that's willing to die for the man next to him. And just throughout a 162-game season, it's hard to really, like, keep that same kind of energy and you're not going to get the same kind of talent. But, like, that's why I wanted to play the game is I want to be the best in the world. And there's no better stage than that playoff game when everyone's at their top of their talent, their interest is fully involved in winning, and really uh, just that adrenaline rush and that real pure purity of baseball's back in that playoffs. So, like, I'll do anything just to pitch in the playoffs again. One or two more. We'll go to David. Hey, Mike. Uh, when you look at your pitch data from uh, last season, does anything stand out as I need to change this? I need to make something better. For instance, the movement profile and results on your curveball weren't as good. No, I, I think a lot of that was just rushing back from a, a knee injury early. And I was getting, you know, I was climbing. I was like five or six inches higher on release point on all pitches for my first couple starts. And it really started to affect my curveball more than any, anything. And I think once I started getting my knee back under me and started, you saw my velo get back to where it was and, you know, pitches started molding back into where they should be. So I think that was more just uh, derivative of like my knee just not being ready to perform. Right. So healthy, you're pretty satisfied with the, the profiles of all of your pitches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think just uh, usage. I like the mix around the usage. I don't want anyone to be able to like uh, pigeonhole me into whether it's two two counts I'm throwing a slider every time 60 percent of the time so I was trying to mix usage I just need uh what I've started doing this year too is just using slider more to lefties and uh that's kind of what I want to continue to work on when I get back